G'day! Welcome to another curriculum burst. This time, let's do a curious grade 12 problem. It goes as follows. The function f has the property that for each real number x in its domain, 1 over x is also in its domain. And f of x plus f of 1 over x equals x. Hang on, let me write that down. f of x plus f of 1 over x equals x. Uh, what is the largest set of real numbers that can be in the domain of f? Oh boy, I'm definitely having an emotional reaction to this question. I've never seen a question like this before. It seems weird and strange. I've got a function f, I'm just rereading it right now, such that whenever x in the domain, 1 over x is also in the domain. So I guess there's an x, there's a 1 over x. They both make sense for the function. I get that. But this thing is weird. Somehow I'm meant to play with this, and I've never seen something like this before, and answer a question about the largest set of real numbers that can be in the domain of f. Okay, this is scary. This is totally scary. All right, all right. What strategy can I employ? I guess I need a deep breath first. It's my first strategy. All right. This is weird and odd and strange. In fact, that makes you think I can probably use its weirdness and oddness and strangeness to my advantage. I'm going to do strategy number eight, which is to second guess the author. This probably isn't coming out of nowhere. I bet the author thought of something very clever that this structure is very helpful. All right. So I'm going to embrace the strangeness of this question and just try to do something. f of x plus f of 1 over x equals x. All right, so this is telling me x is being split into two parts. All right, this doesn't make sense. It's probably not true for the question, but wouldn't it be just lovely if it turns out I did the most obvious two parts? This is just x over 2, and that's x over 2 as well. Probably completely wrong. I'm just playing right now, so I'm not going to trust any work I do right now. But at least it gets me a feel for it. So imagine, if this really was the case, that f of x was x over 2 and f of 1 over x was also x over 2. Indeed, that would add up to x. Probably not true, probably wrong. I don't care at this point, I'm just playing. All right, what can I do? Uh, f of x equals that, f of 1 over x. Oh, oh, oh. So we're told whenever x is an input, 1 over x is also an input. That makes me think, but I'll use 1 over x as the input for the first equation as well. Let's put in 1 over x, in which case it would read f of 1 over x equals 1 over x all over 2, that is 1 over 2x. Well, that's curious, because f of 1 over x is this guy. Now, I know I'm playing a game, probably not relevant, probably not right, probably completely wrong, but if I continue this game, I can see that 1 over 2x is going to have to equal x over 2. That is, if I multiply by 2 and cross multiply and all that sort of stuff, x squared is 1, x better be plus or minus 1. So, ah. So that kind of answers the question. If this extra structure is truly nice, then I know that x can only be 1 or negative 1. In fact, that means there's only two values in the domain. All right, technically, none of that is valid. So that's just me playing. I can't actually say that. All I've got is f of x plus f of 1 of x equals x. It's two things, probably not the same. Ah, but I like this idea of using 1 over x as an input for the original equation. So I wonder, if I put in 1 over x into this equation and just see what it reads, what would I get? It might lead to something interesting. So play with it. Try it out. And then compare what you deduce with what I deduce in the essay that goes with this video. It's actually a lot of fun. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.